Digital artists often create imaginative pieces by combining existing photographs with Photoshop graphics. These are some of the most viewed images on social media, but now they are under threat. Instagram has implemented an algorithm designed to flag heavily edited photos and videos, categorizing them as false information. But the intention behind this kind of digital art is to purposefully manipulate images and video. And that means it becomes the prime target of the platform's new policy. We work with third-party experts who are trained in visual verification and they're able to use a variety of tools such as reverse image search tools, tools that let them scrape the metadata from a public photo and then use information in that metadata like where the image was taken and cross-reference that against the context in which the image is being used. And once these third-party fact-checkers flag a photo, Instagram will brand it with a false information warning and restrict its distribution. This original photo by photographer Christopher Haney was digitally altered and reposted by artist Ramzi Mazri. The image went viral and was picked up by a fact-checking website that flagged it. That didn't sit well with photographer Toby Harriman. As much as I do love it to help better associate real versus Photoshop, I also have a huge respect for digital art and I don't want to have to click through barriers to see it. Whether or not those barriers exist, for now, Instagram feels like it can decide what is art and what is fake news. Salome van Sel, TRT World. Julian Salabras joins me now. He teaches at the Courtauld Institute of Art and focuses on populism in contemporary art. Hi, good to have you on our show today. Thanks so much for coming. So, can you please help me unpack this? I mean, let's say I'm a digital artist and I upload a picture that I took on Instagram and I, I mean, I alter the colors and I adjust it for creative effect. Will I get flagged as spreading misinformation? Well, it does seem that that's been happening to some people. Uh, it's a rather bizarre um, occurrence. Uh, the basic problem, of course, is that those uh, social media companies, Instagram included, want to keep you on the site for as long as possible uh, to addict you to addicting information and to um, thus, uh, you know, uh, expose you to tailored ads. Uh, and one of the consequences of that has been uh, the purveying of fake news and extreme views of all sorts, simply because, you know, more provocative and emotive material is, uh, is good at doing that, at holding people onto those sites. Uh, and of course, as the news has become more and more uh, image-based, um, videos uh, and, and photographs are very, very good ways of um, you know, conveying sort of short, sharp bursts of political information. So they have a problem here uh, and they want to deal with it cheaply. Uh, and one way to do that is to try and get um, uh, some kind of artificial intelligence to uh, filter out uh, fake images and fake news. Uh, another is to, which is much more expensive, is to, um, uh, is to employ humans to do the same thing. And mm -hmm. they've, they've employed a few. Um, but one of the consequences, I think, of trying to do it on the cheap is that you get the ridiculous uh, uh, circumstance by which artists who, of course, are always altering images and wanting to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, reuse material and to remake it themselves, uh, are finding that their their work is being flagged yeah. as uh, as fake imagery. Julian, this is this is a great summary. Thanks so much for it. But can you also please tell us, like, what exactly? I mean, is this actually making digital artists' job harder, or I think maybe impossible to an extent, right? Because you alter images. It's 2020, and it's Instagram. It's inevitable, right? Yes, and there's a, a total mismatch in a sense between. Uh, especially when you think about the early days of digital art and internet art. Uh, it was an ethos of dialogue, of sharing, of taking other people's work and altering it, part of which, and doing that was seen as part of a conversation in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea that you, know, you would claim ownership over Im an image or try and sue someone for doing that uh, was anathema to those, those people. Uh, and it's a paradox in the sense that they also pioneer new modes of um, people digitally interacting uh, 
mm -hmm. uh, which in a way pioneered elements of what we now see in social media. But that has all been turned, as I say, towards towards uh, money making and advertising. Okay. So those two worlds are in you know complete contradiction and contention. It's interesting I will say because that it's Instagram, early days. sorry to mm. cut you off there, Julian, but Instagram has yeah. been so good with the art community. I mean, they sort of like almost has, they, they've been a game changer for art scene, contemporary art scene. Mm -hmm. So why is this happening now? I'm not imagining that they're against the idea of altering images. So is there an alternative way to deal with this? And why do you think this is happening? I think that this is a relatively minor blip in a sense, uh, that certain people are finding that their work is being falsely flagged. Uh, given the, you know, the, the tagging arrangements and so on in Instagram, it should be pretty easy to declare in a sense that your work is art um, and to separate it from documentary or political imagery. So I would think that this is something that is a relatively temporary aberration. But as I say, that, that deep clash of ethos and, and the way in which images are, are used and thought about between social media and the art world uh, is, a, is a more you know, you know, kind of profound divide. Uh, the other thing to say though, of course, is that um, Instagram's had a massive effect on the art world too, so that now you see more and more uh, artists making you know, overtly Instagrammable art, um, often involving mirrors and allowing people to play around with their own image in mm -hmm. relation to the, to the work. And do you think this um, will keep on happening or do you yeah. think that the, the, these latest changes will sort of hinder that? I, I don't see these changes as hindering that much. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a, a really profound transformation of the art world in a sense because uh, it used to be that uh, it's, it was the elite who decided what was successful um, and that the art world was relatively insulated from public opinion and popular taste. Uh, and with social media platforms, that's changed uh, enormously. Uh, and the art is beginning to change. It will has, you know, changed quite a bit as a result and will change doubtless even further. Uh, and it's, it's tied up with lots of things, art fairs as well, and the sort of need to shout across the floor of the art mm -hmm. fair and compete with other artists. Um, but the refuge that uh, the art world used to be for a, a rather particular elite culture uh, seems to be eroding. And it's not there anymore. Okay, Julian Stolabras, it was good to have you on our show today. Thank you so much. <laughs>